Hey, it's Ali. Um, I received a message on Instagram, which I'll pop here last week, and it got me thinking and made me want to make this video. So this video is about how, like the journey that we had to buy in our block of land, what made us want to buy our block of land, um, the information we found along the way, things that I wish we knew when we were looking for a block of land, um, just other things on the journey, hidden costs, that sort of thing. Uh, first of all though I wanted to say a massive thank you to those of us that have commented or subscribed to our channel. We feel so loved and supported right now. Uh, I feel a little bit less crazy in the journey that we're taking but it's been great and we really really appreciate it. I also wanted to mention that I didn't grow up with this lifestyle so I know that there's a lot of channels out there or like podcasts that I listen to where people have grown up a certain way or like this way or they've grown up um, with the grandparents teaching them or whatever it is and so they have that foundation whereas I didn't really grow up with that foundation we sort of dabbled in chickens here and there or you know people have tried to teach me how to grow plants here and there but I wasn't interested um, as kids my dad got us chickens and then they weren't cute so I got bored and then my sisters were selling eggs so I sort of really didn't have much of an interest in this lifestyle or knowledge and we're kind of I'm figuring it out as I go Whereas my husband grew up on property, um, a smaller property, and like their family property. And so he has a lot of skills that are really advantageous for out here, but he is also learning as we go, which has been really, really fun to do together. Um, I do think that if someone had a trade behind them embarking on this journey, it would be really, really helpful. But I do think you can figure it out as you go. Like there's so many resources out there, there's YouTube, there's so many people um, explaining how they've done things that you can learn and pick out and find your way. I do think that, I do hope that people look at me and go, if she can do it, anyone can do it, because that's how I think of it. I'm someone that never wanted, I never thought I'd have this lifestyle. Um, and so we're getting there. It's good. So we, so when we bought our property, we bought it outright. Um, so I wanted to sort of mention how that came to be but also that that's not necessary in order to do this journey obviously but there's other things that you need to keep in mind when then looking at a bigger property or rural property or whatever it is so when I was 19 I built a house and then I sold it at a loss so there's hasn't always been the perfect financial decisions and then my, I met my husband and we bought a house, we sold that one, bought a house together, um, renovated that a bit, sold that, but didn't really make much of a profit. And then we bought a house during COVID that the bank said that we had actually overpaid for. Um, and then 18 months later, you know, we were sort of watching too much Netflix tiny house and the mortgage free shows and just joked on the couch one night that we should sell our house and buy a block of land and we did um, so we did that and we sold our house for enough so the house that was originally considered not worth it to the bank we actually ended up selling it um, at a profit quite like a quite a significant profit so that was really that was it was great for us um, because I think if we had stayed with the current interest rates we would have had to sell anyway so I think we sort of got out at a good time so that's been really really helpful in starting the journey um, so when we were selling our house and budgeting to buy this block we had budgeted a certain amount of money so we had budgeted 200,000 to buy our block and we were then going to buy like a granny flat I think for about $35,000 and so under most council rules so these are Australian rules obviously and they differ from council to council so you need to look up in the area that you're buying it's like a caravan that would fold out to bedrooms and a bathroom and like a little living area. So that was our original plan. And we looked at blocks and Colin found this one. So we bought this property for 270000 So that really affected our budget. The other thing that we were looking at with having um, a surplus there was we were going to buy like um, a kit shed or a shed home or yeah, like a, a kit house but the shed or a cabin was the name of the one we were looking at and we were going to have enough money then to do the slab, the shed, convert it, that sort of thing. But we overspent. 
Um, so we bought a property that had a little weekender on it. So it was a two room house with two little decks. And if you've seen in other videos or Instagram, you'll know that we have renovated one of those rooms for my son Oliver. And then one of those rooms, one of the decks for um, our bedroom. And then it's also got a caravan attached which we were going to rip out and we're going to renovate and turn into a bedroom for the two younger boys to share. So our long-term plan is to obviously build the family home, but this is what we're working with right now. So when we bought our property, we bought the block of land, obviously. One thing I forgot about was stamp duty. So on a block for that price, the stamp duty was just over $8,000, I believe from memory. So that will vary as well. If you're buying a bigger block, you stay, a more expensive block, your stamp duty will go up. And I know from what I've heard, um, properties that are over 100 acres can be really, really hard to get a mortgage on. So we were really fortunate. However, I think if someone was wanting over 100 acres and they were going to get a mortgage, you're going to have to do all of that extra research compared to just getting like a standard home loan, to my knowledge. Uh, otherwise, you could easily go off grid with a lot smaller block. This was just what suited us. So then we also budgeted, we had it planned that we bought the block of land, there was settlement, that the second day we had our shipping container home delivered. So our shipping container is a smaller shipping container and that is the kitchen and the bathroom. However, we did sleep in it for a month, all five of us. You make do. And so that was under a payment plan. So we put a $20,000 deposit down on that shipping container home with an in-house payment plan with that company. I'm not sure if they're still doing it, um, but there was no interest with that one obviously, and that's been really, really handy. So we have like basically a loan on the shipping container. So that was, the prices have changed actually, so I don't know if it's worth me mentioning because I, we got one of the first ones with this company and they were one of the cheapest and I, think that maybe they've put their prices up to like accommodate for the cost of actually building it essentially I think we just were very fortunate that we got a bargain um, so our shipping container came with the bathroom done a compostable toilet the kitchen fully done a hot water system uh, the solar panels the inverter and the batteries so we have 600 amp hours and that is something that I think that people need to look into in terms of how much um, I did have it explained to me and I really understood it at the time, but I don't remember it enough to explain it. So uh, maybe there's another video out there or there's something online that can explain basically what you're going to get with amp hours and your appliances. So something I really underestimated was just plugging everything in. You might have seen in a previous video, like our fridge that we have is our old family fridge from our other home which in hindsight we were really lucky that we could just plug that in and it worked because I also just assumed I could plug the washing machine in and it shorts our solar system. So I know that this company that went th we went through, they now, the, their package comes with more storage and I believe a bigger inverter. Um, so that's really handy for people moving forward. So the things that we didn't really take into account is the kettle shorts the solar system, the toaster, we can use half the toaster and sometimes it'll flick off halfway through and we boil our kettle on the gas stove or on the fire and I know for veteran off-gridders and in a lot of the Facebook groups that is just obvious and common knowledge but I didn't know that I had no idea um, one thing that does work though is the slow cooker but it will drain the battery so all the batteries won't charge through the day so there's all these like learning curves that I really didn't take into account when we were buying or what I was planning for. So it could have very easily been a case of, you know, the fridge, depending on your solar system, the fridge won't work. And so then you're up for a new fridge and those sorts of things. So we run our um, washing machine off the generator and on the odd occasion we'll plug, like if the washing's on of an evening, we'll plug the generator into the house as well so that we could just watch a little bit of TV or something like that. However, for the most part, we charge things through the day. Um, if the kids want to play PlayStation or whatever, that happens in the heat of the day on a Saturday when it's they need a break from everything else. Anyway, so that works well. Um, 
the other things I didn't think about, with, so with our land, like you wouldn't get a block of land in Brisbane for $270,000 now. I would be shocked if there's anything for that price. And that was, we, I think we were working with a, we're very fortunate in that we decided to be mortgage free. However, um, there's obviously like much, you could spend a bit more money and get a bit more, like more bang for your buck essentially in terms of we bought a very cheap block and that comes with its own disadvantages because like from the main road or the main town is about 40 minutes and it's a big drive in on a road that's not really maintained and so you're going to have to have those compromises where we are it didn't rain for several years we're very fortunate that when we did move here we have had rain but that's not going to be the case the whole time and our creek has dried up and so we have those disadvantages. So I think when buying a block of land, you need to look at what your priorities are. Like, are you comfortable carting water in? Can you connect to town water? Can you connect to mains power? Things like that. So when we, so we bought our block of land, settlement happened. The next day our shipping container was delivered. Um, the other thing with that was that was $5,000 delivery. And I think it might have been more if they knew how bad our road was. Like I was actually half expecting another bill at the end of it, but we were really fortunate with our truck driver. Then the next day, and so we got straight into building a pad for our water tank. So we have an, we had a nine week old baby and we were carting this sandy soil and Colin had built a frame and we were carting it in buckets because we don't have a wheelbarrow. Um, then the shipping container, oh the, sorry, the water tank arrived before we finished it so then we had to pull it onto the pad with our car and so there's those lots of lo little challenges too so we were very fortunate that our neighbors had straps because we had snapped the rope trying to pull that on and just planning those things like are you going to work are you going to be very budget friendly and try and do it all yourself and do you have the equipment to do so or do you have it in your budget that you can obviously pay someone or you've got time to have like have it prepped and then put the water tank on then the next day we had a delivery of water so that was four hundred dollars for about seven thousand liters so that's about a third of our tank um and that will sort of give us three weeks worth of water and we've been very fortunate that we've had enough rain that we haven't had to buy any more water in the town i believe the water was about 200 and something to have it delivered we lived far out so it was 300 and then the day before we were told that it was 400 to be delivered and obviously in the drought you can have more water carters at the moment we're not in a drought and there was two people that i knew of i think actually only one that was referred back to him so you had i have no choice or we have no choice to pay whatever he's going to charge us so that's something to take into consideration in terms of of the rainfall and so we were looking that stuff up when we were buying our property but because of our budget a lot of the properties were the same in terms of their rainfall or limited rainfall um so that was handy and the other thing is like with your solar if you're buying a block with a lot of trees are you actually going to get your batteries charging every day um another one was like what's your income going to be so i know in our area in a rural town there's actually a lot of jobs so it depends what your job is obviously if I wanted to use my nursing, there's definitely nursing positions available. However, with our drive that we have, it's not worth the trip for us. The other thing you can do is, so like Colin makes bows and arrows, it's really handy because he works from home. And if you had another job where you're looking to work from home, you can, you're not that limited in where you could buy. Um, or other, other revenue streams. So we couldn't do Airbnb out here because... I don't think many people would be able to get out here. Mm, it's too far out. Yeah, too far out. You'd need a four-wheel drive. So the other things you consider are different, like revenue streams. Are you wanting somewhere that's off the highway and you can have like a market stall out the front of your property or a easy access Airbnb? Are you someone that's going to want to do workshops? Are you going to run like canning workshops or meat workshops or whatever? And you need a property that's going to be accessible in order to do that and have another revenue stream. Those sorts of things aren't advantageous for us where we are 
let's say for Colin with his bows and arrows doing a bow workshop where we are going to go pick the customer up or the customer's coming out just for a weekend on the odd occasion mm -hmm. opposed to having a convoy of people rocking up on a weekend yeah. um, you might decide to plant a bunch of pear trees and do pear cider and have a little shop at, or like a bar or whatever at the front of your property that's not something that we could do and I think they're great things to keep in mind um, in terms of things like Airbnb is also the long term are you going to live on that property long term because if you then sell that property down the track that then needs to you'll be up for capital gains tax so is this your short term and you're looking for an income stream that then is going to kind of penalize you down the track or is it going to be worth it for you those other things the other another one you can do is if you're looking to either go tiny or live off grid or whatever you could rent some land from someone or you could rent your land out so there's a website now called park my tiny house um so that's been a really great resource for a lot of people so this lady kind of vets everyone gets all their info are they wanting families to live on their block or are you a family wanting to rent a block and i think uh, from memory i could be wrong from memory like a nice property on sunshine coast in queensland you're looking at renting for about 200 dollars a week so for us, rural, tiny town, out of the way from everything, it's not worth it for us to rent it out to someone because we'd be looking at $75 a week or something like that. Yeah. And so then you kind of, we've got someone in our space and it's not a revenue stream that would be worth it in our mind at this stage. Yeah. The other thing is different councils. So the different councils have different laws. Can you even, or different rules, can you put a tiny home on your block? Do you need to have a pre-existing dwelling on your block? Do you care? Because in a lot, of, you know, you'll jump on a lot of the Facebook groups, which can be a really great resource. Mm -hmm. um, they, a lot of people don't care. So they've gone off grid because, you know, they don't want to have a bar of anyone and they don't want to follow the rules. Cool, if that's your jam, do that. But you might be at risk of the council kicking you off sort of thing and telling you to go build a house they've all got different things like you can live in a tiny house for a certain amount of time I believe yeah. but it varies and different councils are more or less strict one thing that we were pretty set on with our buying our block of land is we wanted to follow the rules so we were looking for a dwelling entitlement some of them might have development approval mm -hmm. um, so we from my knowledge is building on the pre-existing home that's there I'm not sure if the DA and DE rules vary from council to council. So we were very fortunate. Uh, one thing that we did do is we got a, we were told that we had a dwelling entitlement over the phone. So then our solicitor said, you need to get that in an email because then they can't backtrack. So we made sure that we've got the paper trail. So we have dwelling entitlement on paper. And so no one can sort of backtrack on that one. Mm -hmm. And that was something that we didn't really think about until the final hour and we were actually going through settlement. The other one is like soil or growing or what conditions you want. So if you're wanting to have the most amazing veggie patch, what climate are you looking to buy in? Or you, you don't care about a veggie patch, you're happy to just buy locally or whatever. We have very like sandy soil here. We have put our veggie patch where there was previously a veggie patch and it was fertilized a lot. And you can tell because the soil is so different. Are you prepared to put the years in to change the soil? Because... Yeah. I'm very aware that my veggie patch is a years long project to get it mm. healthy. Yeah. So different soil types, different conditions, um, and then budgeting for that too. So like our veggie patch, I've jumped online to see how much space I need in order to feed my family for a year. And we've got a pretty modest veggie patch that we might build on as I learn to actually grow things. Um, but for example, that's taking three rolls of wire to do and one roll of wire is $450 and we're very fortunate that we had that log cabin kit home. So we've used all that as beams and we've had stuff to use. There's all these mm. costs. So if you're wanting to deep dive into going off grid and being self-sufficient and your budget is $500,000, don't go and spend $500,000 on a block of land. What are some of the other hidden costs that we really didn't think about? Um, things like fuel even have been a big thing. Like we sort of didn't realise how much we were going to go through fuel 
because being off grid we're away from the highway but it's not highway driving it's not cruisy driving to get back to the main road so i think yeah, we we road. probably chew a lot more fuel than what someone driving in the suburbs would just to get back to town for simple stuff like dropping the kids at school or, or the generator or yeah, yeah and, and we run a generator if it's raining uh, if we get so a few cloudy days or rainy days in a row then um we have to run a generator to keep everything powered um keep the fridges cold and things like that and we that's were, again more fuel so we were going really well when we were all sleeping in that shipping container and that was kind of it and it was really simple but we had a few rainy days and the batteries didn't die but once we sort of because the little house that we are renovating uh doesn't have electricity we like we would like to build on our solar system that we have mm -hmm. But having like the lamps plugged in and things like yeah. that, everything adds up, I find. And um, so you yeah. have to, when it rains, you have to have the generator on. Yeah, and rainy days with the kids are stuck inside, so they want to watch TV and that's chewing power. So mm. we've got to power that. Um, all those little things add up. So. But the long-term goal is to obviously be self-sufficient. We don't want to be chewing through this much fuel for the rest of our lives. The long-term on the big house, big solar system, all of that. This is just the journey to get there, and it's just a very short-term expense, yep. but we definitely underestimated it. The only other thing, with the roads, we had like an outlander, and the damage this road was doing to our car was costing us a fortune. So then to try and get it roadworthy and sell it, we couldn't do it because it needed it needed work each time I'd book it into the mechanic. So then we've had to swap that for a Rodeo, which then we also had to add a couple thousand dollars to that. And say, for example, like I drove to Brisbane this weekend, it took $40 to get up there in our old car and it took $100 in our new car because it's a V6. Mm -hmm. So those are the other costs. But in other ways, you can't offset it because you're driving less than maybe in the city or you, maybe you're chewing that amount of fuel anyway when you're sitting in traffic. Yeah. Um, but the costs in other ways are less, like we don't have electricity bills. If So far, we don't have a water bill, but we do have gas. So the, to rent the big bottle, you have to pay to rent the big bottles. Um, so at this stage, it works out better for us to get the small bottles and the small bottle lasts us roughly 21 days. Mm -hmm. but that's with us cooking on the fire and things like that so yeah. that might be higher um but if you've got it in your budget that you know you're going to cook on the gas every night and you, you you can have those utilities great so if having utilities within your budget that's great um if you want to be more simple you can absolutely do it out here so that works out really well and mm -hmm. um, the other thing is if you've got children so how far are you from the local school or are there homeschooling groups in your area if you're going to homeschool? Those sorts of things I definitely think need to be taken into consideration. Do you like that school? Is For us, if we don't like our current school, it's going to be an hour's drive each way. For our, if, like, mm -hmm. if something happened, we had to change our kids' school. And so I think that's something else to keep in mind. I think the only other main expense that we've had in terms of getting set up and being self-sufficient is with the animals so we obviously were, we were given chickens and a rooster and we hatched the eggs we bought a very cheap incubator which is kind of playing up which then drains the solar battery so we're not using that anymore mm -hmm. so to raise your own chickens like if you're looking to raise your own meat chickens you've got the incubator going um, and then you are feeding them for 10 weeks if it's meat chickens or if you've got some crossbreed that you're looking to wait until they grow you're looking around 16 weeks same with ducks so if you're wanting to raise ducks waiting 16 weeks mm -hmm. and having like the feed for them and those costs to get set up mm. is expensive yep. fencing for all of them pens like are you someone that if it is it in your budget that you're going to you know, like a 100, 100 meter roll of wire is $450 for one particular type. Are you gonna get someone out to do the fencing or are you doing fencing yourself? Are you gonna be building chicken pens straight away? Or are you on the mm. slow slog like us where we are having to cut down dead standing trees and practice a bit of silver culture and tidy this place up before we are then putting the paddock fences in. Mm -hmm. and, then we're, and then we're getting animals and we're yeah. ideally buying lambs and then you're feeding those lambs until you can slaughter them mm -hmm. while still having all your costs. You still have a grocery bill every week. You still have your utilities every week. So this is 
I think it's going to take us roughly two years to really be benefiting from this and maybe five years is our goal to be fully self-sufficient mm -hmm. but I think being realistic because it added up very quickly in terms of wire and animals and mm. potting mix to get the garden going and obviously you know when you've just bought a block of land you don't have established compost and buying all these products to get your garden going while still getting your grocery bill each week definitely adds up so mm -hmm. you know kind of burning the candle at both ends yeah. and at the moment it's really tight mm -hmm. but that's because we're Try, we're setting up but also trying to do the week to week and that yeah. was something I really underestimated how quickly that adds up mm -hmm. it's definitely important to have the enclosures and things for animals because we have problems with wildlife here not pest wildlife but even native wildlife like we have voles here that mm. are pretty bad with chooks and ducks and things like that so they need you know everything has to be put away at night time there's other problem animals in other areas potentially so it's definitely important to have those things if you are going to have any livestock to make sure wild dogs um you're not going to lose any of them because then that's more money down the drain to replace them so making sure you do proper yeah. fencing even with the veggie patch you know we had this cute veggie patch that birds and possums can get into so now we're having to go through the hassle of extending beams and building a frame and then building this giant enclosure just to keep the veggie patch safe yeah, you'll see that one soon yeah <laughs> So we, you know, obviously this year it's not going to pay for itself, but down the track it will. And yeah, I just, right. I really yeah. underestimated that. But buying, like we bought five ducks and three of them got taken. And like two of them went missing in the middle of the day. So we don't even know it took them. So we've also got a lot of uh, prey, oh, predatory birds around here. Like we had a wedge-tailed eagle the other day. Um, so I think it's being mindful of all of those things too, keeping everything safe because that's going to cost you money. If you're buying ducks to then breed to to then um, raise up your own ducklings, it's kind of a waste of money if they get taken straight off the bus. Mm. I digressed a bit and I quickly wanted to touch on the other like housing options you can do. So we did, so originally we had budgeted for the granny flat that we wanted to buy. Otherwise we were looking at doing like the shed cabin with the concrete slab and everything that you then have to convert. Some of the other things that we've seen people do um, is like two shipping containers, concrete slab or flooring, and then a roof in the middle. That's mm -hmm. like a really popular one on, on a lot of the off-grid groups. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other houses? Some of the other people, um, like in all these groups, a lot of people do yurts. You can do mud brick homes. Yeah, mud brick homes is another one. Straw bale houses. I feel like I've seen a couple of those. Yeah, there's been some straw bale ones. They're quite time consuming, but... But if you, if you want it to be really simple and go off-grid and be self-sufficient and your budget's smaller than the average person or you just don't want to spend that amount of money, go for it. There are so many options. The other thing is looking at certain houses. Like I follow a couple people on Instagram who if, you're looking, if you've got the budget there and you're looking to just buy a block of land, build your forever home, be done with it, lots of different tactics in building a very energy-efficient home. Mm. which is obviously our long-term goal down the track and we have a lot of research to do with that yep. so that's been really really interesting and the final thing i wanted to touch on was healthcare. so uh, for example i went to brisbane for a specialist appointment today and i rocked up and it's cancelled because the doctor's sick so then i have a five-hour drive home because the healthcare is so limited down here um there's like one ambulance in the next town so if that ambulance is out on another job and you need an ambulance, you're kind of stuffed. Or when we did need an ambulance for our son one night, um, I was in Brisbane and Colin was on his own and they nearly refused to come out because of our road. So mm -hmm. had I known all these things, probably would have played a part in the block of land that we chose. So hopefully we can overcome these things down the track mm -hmm. and we're better prepared for them. But if you're someone that has chronic health conditions, I think having a good plan in terms of, you know, are you going to be doing a five-hour drive every month or every two weeks? Does that align with your goals and values? Do you Are you happy to do that five-hour drive because it means you're working less or you're, you know, growing your own veggies with less pesticides or whatever your goals are or what it, and your goals and values are? Mm -hmm. 
um, if you're someone that's going to have children looking into the different things. So I was driving to Brisbane to get my son's immunizations and then I found out there's a community health nurse down here. So a lot of the doctors aren't taking new patients, but I was able to get in with the community health nurse to get his vaccination. And so just being aware of those things if they are something that you need, especially mm. so, like regularly, yep. the ongoing health care or even jumping on the doctor's wait list. Um, straight away so that you're not you're getting in as a new patient yeah, even things like prescriptions yes getting prescriptions filled we've got to drive an hour and a bit to get medications filled for things you know it might be a case that you buy a block that's even further away from a pharmacy and you've got to go even further to get things like that so and there's different laws so like we have a medication for our son that I could just take into any pharmacy and I would do that when it was convenient down here that pharmacy has to hold that script so obviously I've gone to the Tenerfield pharmacy one day because that was convenient to me and they have to now keep that script originally I was told they couldn't do it but that law actually changed that was it Glenn Innes told me they couldn't do it the law changed no one told me that and I was actually driving to Queensland to get it um, and long story short I now go to Tenerfield even though there's a pharmacy in Deepwater that can do it because I wasn't aware of those laws I now have a long drive mm -hmm. Um, and also just the time of stuff. So there's so much in these towns. In Brisbane, if you need something at 10 o'clock on a Sunday night, you can get it. And down here, if I need Ventolin on a Sunday, I have to drive to Queensland. I have to drive to Stanthorpe, which is over an hour and a half away if I need Ventolin on a Sunday. So learning to be organised, you can't really... There's a, like the bakeries shut really early on a Saturday afternoon and things like that and just being organized was something that I really really had to learn mm -hmm. my son's script if he's gonna run out on a Sunday I'm not getting it on a Sunday I need to be getting it before 12 o'clock on a Saturday and so that's taken some adjustment mm -hmm. pulling up and seeing that everything's closed but I think yeah. that I've tried to keep it I apologize that it's a long video I have tried to keep it relatively concise in terms of the stuff that I think we wish we knew mm -hmm. all the things that we learned yeah. along the way because we didn't, I haven't grown up rural. You didn't grow up rural. I didn't grow up this rural. <laughs> this rural. Um, and so I do hope that anyone that's looking to go on this journey, even if I've given you more to think about and go, oh, you know, have a bit more research. Mm. But yes. But definitely do your research before you go, no, I can't do that. That's too hard. Um, There's just probably a different way around it. Yeah, it's a matter of doing the research and finding those little things, finding those ways around potential problems and then make it work if it's something that you really want to do yeah definitely we've got a lot of half finished projects on the go so once we finish some of those up we'll get another progress video up mm, so that'll be of, really fun yeah lots of cool stuff happening so much half happening so super quick i just looked up some of our prices so the granny flat that we were looking at originally that you know fits in with the um caravan laws that was thirty five thousand dollars all done um the water tank that we had delivered was two thousand nine hundred dollars so that was a twenty two and a half thousand dollar tank that included the delivery and like the fittings for it as well and you can choose where you want your overflow and the tap hole and things like that uh the pump that we had paid for so we paid six hundred and twenty dollars for a pump and it wasn't in stock so we were upgraded for free and that was shorting our solar system so we actually couldn't use that and then because our son had poked holes in the box, we couldn't get a refund. So we then had to go and buy like a cheap pump from Bunnings because that was the one that fits with the power usage for our solar system. So that was about $300 or so. And then um, because we obviously couldn't plug the washing machine in, we had to go and buy a generator. So that was about $500 just for a King's generator. Um, but by that point we'd settled and done everything and kind of spent all that money. They were sort of like those little extra costs. I think that's it. Oh, and out here we've got two sets of rates. So you've got rates and then you've got like your rural agriculture type rates. I forget the name of them, but they, it's just two separate rates that you get out here. It is a lot lower than obviously when we were living in the city, but it's just another cost to keep in mind. Thank you so much. If you got this far, we really, really appreciate it. And as always, please like and subscribe and follow us on our journey. Mm -hmm. Thank you.